Hello guys. So the topic of today's video is tick manipulating at fishing spots and how it works. But more specifically is the auto retaliating fishing. So, um, and why it doesn't work for, uh, this particular, uh, for like feather, whatever it's called, lure rod fishing spot and why it doesn't work. So if I show it here, see, it doesn't work at all. Oh, it does work. Huh. Why is it working? Okay, I don't count. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's because when I'm I'm reinteracting with the fishing spot, that's why. So I'm starting a five tick cycle by uh, fishing with the with the spot. But if I do it correctly, like this, see, it's not working as normal. Even weirdly, if I put it on accurate, I'm able to uh, free tick fish, or in this case, uh, five tick fish, because it's a uh, goblin's hit. Actually, I, this goblin has four tick, actually. Some goblins hit five tick. Anyways, I'm four tick fishing right now. And that is because when you auto retaliate, you essentially. Uh, you're delayed. Your actions are delayed by half your attack speed, rounded down. So my attack speed is three tick. So I'm delayed by one tick. So <clears throat> for like mining and stuff, this is really us useful because you can basically mine a rock in one tick after getting attacked. But of course, you can't like you can't get attacked so quickly. So it's usually limited to like three tick mining and stuff like that. And it can work for a lot of fishing spots. I know there's a two tick fishing method for level threes and pay to play, which is really useful. They use multi with uh, two four tick attacking monsters. And the reason why it works for uh, accurate in our case here is because um, and let me do it correctly here. The reason why it works is because you're two ticking here. And <clears throat> let me actually go into the fishing code because I actually did for a teal and four scape. I did write the, um, I wrote fishing for a teal and four scape and we use our we use RuneScript as our scripting language, and we have a very accurate uh, server. So we try to make it as authentic as possible. So I had to really reverse engineer the code, and I think it's actually pretty interesting, but it's pretty simple. Why uh, auto retaliate with rapid doesn't work with these types of fishing spots. So let me just open up my VS code. And um, so what I have here is this is the phishing NPC config. So Jagex might have it sorted a different way, but this is an NPC file, which is has like the config. So it's like the NPC data. So if you didn't know, phishing spots are NPCs. And um, so it usually has stuff like Usually NPCs have their own, you know, level, but this one has it hidden, of course. And, um, you know, it has like the name, the description, or the, yeah, they call it the description here, but it's, uh, it's just like the examine. And then they have like other properties. And then they also have these OP1s, OP3s. So these are like the click options, but you may notice there's, 
some hidden ones down here. And these ones are pretty interesting. Um, so <clears throat> these are essentially like triggers that you can write scripts off of. So if I go here, this is the code I have written for each trigger. So I have OP MPC one. So that is the OP one trigger. So this is what happens when you for these fishing spots. So lure bait fishing spots. <clears throat> when you click on the lure option, it uh, runs this piece of code downwards and this is actually just a label so it 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 jumps to this label down here so we'll be looking at this code real quick so of course it checks like level and then i have a um this is like a function so a proc where it checks fishing equipment so it displays like a certain message you don't we don't need to look at the proc but then it also like it has these, these are called player variables where it, um, where these are like variables set in the player. So like stuff like questing, they're called VARPs. Stuff like quest progress are stored in these. But in our case, we're storing like the timings for the scale animation. And also this action delay here. This is actually the secret sauce to tick manipulation is this action delay VARP see it it actually just compares itself to map clock which is the amount of server ticks the server's been running for and then it, it sets it it adds to it so this is like essentially creating a five tick cycle here adding so action delay equals map clock plus four <laughs> also it's pretty funny uh root script they have like this calc these are called engine engine commands so it's like a, a calc engine command. They can't like they can't actually like calculate normally how you would in like Python or anything. But anyways, I'm rambling too long. Um, so this OP MPC one, that's when you first click on the fishing spot. This is for attempting to fish at the spot. It's what I like to call it. And then it also has these hidden options, and these are continuing to fish. What I mean about that is, give me a second. Sorry, give me a second. <clears throat> I accidentally turned my volume down. There you go. So what I mean about that is um, when you first click on a fishing spot, it's the OP1, but they don't really have a good way to continue fishing without having like a whole new interaction set to it. Um, essentially what they do is they have this POP NPC function that or I'm sorry uh, POP MPC command that you know this would be calling P this would be calling OP MPC 2 of the active MPC man I'm going way too deep into this um, but um, essentially after you attempt fishing spot uh, attempt uh, fishing at the fishing spot you um, it calls OP MPC two, which is our hidden options, our hidden OP, and then it runs through this code, and then it jumps to this label down here, and this essentially it checks. I'll, I I checks a couple of the same things, but it checks like extra stuff like, um, like if you have enough free space, and then it does like some skill animation and stuff so like and then that's like that's like the visual effects and then got the sound you get this message here <clears throat> and then 
this is it, it checks if you're like if you're ready to like actually like create a new tick cycle and then this right here is the bit of code that checks if you're due a roll so when action delay is equal to map clock it um it gives you the fish roll so this is my fishing this is my fish roll proc so if you're above 30 fishing then it gives a raw trout and sam and raw salmon fishing roll else it'll just give you this trout fishing roll and oh i don't even need this piece here i have extra oh well, it doesn't matter um but um yeah so after you get the fishing roll it attempts to fish again at the fishing spot with the hidden it attempts to do the hidden interaction with the fishing spot this is um this is crucial i like to see this as continuing to fish this hidden interact interaction so continues to fish and as you notice it might be like these two scripts might be slightly different if you've noticed already it's because this is actually missing the the check for if you're due a roll this action delay equals map clock i'm guessing they just forgot to add the check for the beginning to fish interaction <clears throat> again when you click on a fishing spot it's this op npc1 and then only that later calls op npc2 which is when you're continuing to fish <clears throat> they do this for other stuff too by the way they do this for mining they do this for wood cutting they do this for um uh, they do it for i think in osars they do it for fire making now but i think in in action 2004 escape it, we don't actually have any hidden ops for fire making <clears throat> i think it's pretty interesting but um but yeah every fishing spot is different by the way i can really go deep into fishing i think um like if you want to know like oh how come how come uh <clears throat> how come when you're doing two tick fishing for harp for harpoon fishing like you auto retaliate you like you don't have to click off the fishing spot to auto retaliate like you can auto retaliate during fishing and that's because uh, actually, i actually haven't looked at this code for a while but uh as you can see so this is the label when you first fish at the fishing spot and as you can, as you can see this continue to fishing uh this this uh command to continue to fish is only called in these two, uh, these two blocks of code. It's not called in this um, block of code where it like checks to redo roll. So this is why two tick fishing is possible for harpoon fishing. Because first of all, it checks if you do roll in the beginning to fish uh, spot code, <clears throat> and. Second of all, it makes it even easier that it it doesn't even bother con continuing to fish after this. Which I guess makes sense. I guess I guess maybe Jagex um I don't really know why they do it this way. I think because they have they do uh this P O P M P C one here instead of like actually they uh they do like this random call here to like double check after like to check if you're able to like create a tick cycle at all but i haven't actually looked at this code for a while but because it's been i see as you can see right here uh i 
PR'd this uh, five months ago. That was a long time ago. But uh, anyways, this is actually turning into ramble. This is kind of crazy. But um, yeah, I hope you guys learned something. I thought I'd figured I'd, um, I'd kind of explain why uh, fishing is the way it is. Actually, I don't know why it's this way. Like uh, Every fishing spot is different. It's, I don't know. I don't know why they did it like this. It's very bad. Uh, it's like, I don't know why. They could have literally could have just copied and pasted all the code. Like, my running theory is that they try to, like, combat bots by making fishing inconsistent, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I think it was just, like, an intern that wanted to... It kept forgetting how to do fishing, so they did it completely from scratch every time. But who knows? Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and see you next time.